Report. I'm Kevin Pereira. It's nice to see you. Candace Bailey is busy. She's defusing a nuclear warhead for the president. So guess what? Grace Helbig is here. G4 Studios in Los Angeles. It's the truth. On the show today, Jonah Hill yeah! will be here to tell us about his new animated series on Fox. It's Alan Gregory. Ooh. Oh, look, he's a cartoon. Cute. Then Weston Scott visits MMA legend Boss Rutten at his gym to learn how to fend off a knife attack and how to disarm a crazy person with a baseball bat. Now, if he has a knife bat, you're screwed. Sorry, one or the other. Efficiency is key, though. And and guess what? Candace Bailey goes to Vegas to fire off some guns. Yeah! yeah. Hey, uh, uh, but Kevin, are all of your co-hosts normally so violent? Not right away, but yeah, give it a give it a week or two, and you'll want to do that to this. I'm from New Jersey. Time now <laughs> to run down the top five things on the web. Does that mean every morning you wake up with a gun I in your hand no. and you don't know why? I wake up, shank someone, I put the coffee on, and then I just enjoy my day. Oh, well, that's admirable that you can do it before the decaf. Oh, yeah. Just get that shank in. Now I'm a professional. Well, let's get stabby on around the net. Yeah. <laughs> Today. Bike goes up, face goes down. Well, I'll eat a face plant to plank. He nailed it. That was that was pretty good. Butt is so nice. What? It's his butt. He's presenting his butt so nice. Oh, that's yeah. That's like the new the new hotness at the X Games is to, yeah. to get if you want the ten out of it you really got to work it. Out. That's it. That was great. <laughs> Hashtag, I'd tap that. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. That guy needs a, an airbag for his head or at least a like a just a regular bag to go over half of his face. I don't know if you oh. saw him afterwards, but he looks like uh, oh. he looks like Harvey Dent basically. Oh. <laughs> I guess it's good he's got a great butt. Yeah. <laughs> That's all he's got. In at number four today, a water ski jump and an overly enthusiastic announcer. Oh, I'm sure this will end well. In the meantime, Carl Demeyer coming in. Let's jump. Second attempt. Oh, no! Oh, wow! Are you okay, Kyle? <laughs> Someone needs to get in there. Medical personnel and trained swimmers only, please. <laughs> Kyle, can you give us a wave if you're okay? Ladies and gentlemen, it's here for Carl Demeyer! <laughs> 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 I love it, Let's hear it for Kyle Demeyer! Who knows? Amazing. <laughs> Kyle, are you okay? Are we still on for Jumbo Juice later? <laughs> Give us a wave. Everything just shattered off that guy oh on God. impact. That was the best part. His skis, his helmet, his dignity. Yeah. I, well, to be honest, I just want that announcer to leave my outgoing voicemail message. <laughs> Grace is not here! <laughs> leave a message at the sound of the awesome! <laughs> that announcer does make everything better. Voicemails, even, honestly, I bet it would make the bike video that we just showed even better. I wonder. Let's jump, second attempt. Oh no! Oh, wow! Kyle, can you give us a wave if you're okay? <laughs> oh, wait for the wave. Oh, Kyle, it works. Oh, Kyle. Okay. Uh, in at number three today, sports. Yeah, sports. If you watched last week's ESPN broadcast of UCLA versus the University of Arizona, you might have been surprised to see a college football game turn into this. And, and here's the other thing, too. When you're winning and you yell and stomp and scream the way Mike Stoops has, when you're winning, they say he's a fiery competitor. And he's going now. We've got some of the players who are mixing it up, and this has a potential to get ugly. Some players are on the field fighting, and the benches are empty. Mayhem has broken out here at the end of the first half. <laughs> 
every game, I would actually watch college football. Agreed. But I, I know you're wondering what could have possibly caused a full-scale on-field riot. I am. entire clip is the screaming guy in the stands. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. I think mean, that guy loves the naked dudes. He loves them so Of course. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> Best game ever. Put a helmet <laughs> yeah, on him. I'm going to smack his butt in the locker room. Skins for skins. <laughs> our, our number two video comes courtesy of The Horse, a guy who's really into getting hit in the junk. Uh, sorry, Grace, I have to stop you. Around, around here we call him a testicular artiste. Oh. <laughs> So, Hoss, I do enjoy that ish. See, it was an intriguing use of found objects to create a striking hole with the use of a tractor tire. The horse invokes a certain, mm, shall we say, working class East. Uh, damn it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. no, no from no, the top, from the top, Miss Grace Hedwig. No, I want no, to. No, be, okay. Oh, was, no. You can't, cannot interrupt a tasteful cross dissolve, Grace Hedwig. Oh, we had already oh. begun dissolving. Oh. Go on. Oh, screw it. Take it, Grice. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> but to pick up where you so failed, yes, but <laughs> while not lacking in inspiration, I did find this piece <sighs> derivative of more established artists such as Pasek O and Jackson Bollock. Puns, 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 puns. Yes, puns. indeed, Jackson. Rather punny indeed. Yes, quite, quite, quite indeed. Puns, puns, puns. Yes. Take it. Just another one of those mics. They open the prices for you. Oh, 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 number one. Oh, 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 You've been waiting for it yourself. I, yeah, I've been so excited. Since this morning, you've been saying, number one, we're going to get yeah, there. Yeah, I've been saying I'm number one, but yeah, oh, I'm number one. misconstrued that. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, in at number one today, we have found footage of a guy who's having just a really bad night. It happens. Fortunately, though, he won't remember it in the morning. And now for some musical accompaniment from our very special guests. Mm -hmm. Paprika du jour and the free jazz experience. Five, six, one, two, three, four, jazz, jazz, jazz. Get your keys. Oh, there's a wall. That's where it, oh my gosh, if a man falls in the hallway, do you hear it? Yes, you do. You hear it. Jazz. Where's the food? Where's the food? Oh, surprise. Where are your pants? Where's your pants? There's your pants. There's the wall. Your familiar friend, the wall. Jazz. Get the pants, then the food, then the door. That's a plan. Jazz. Jazz, you're someone's dad. You're someone's dad. Jazz, you have a family. You came from a responsible woman or not. Get the food. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. There she goes. My future husband, there he goes. Jazz, 
chance. Don't forget the food. It's still good. It's still good. Eat it now, Jazz. 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 The world could be a dangerous place. There could be somebody behind any corner waiting to take you out. Like Boss Rudin. Hey, hey Wes, what's up, buddy? Oh, you, look at this, look at this. It's fun, right? Oh, what about this? Hand control, hold him, hold him, boom, or hold. Oh. Welcome to Lethal D, guys. God, I missed this. Hey, you missed this. I see you like crucifixes, right? Oh, maybe I haven't missed it. <laughs> yeah. Give me a little insight about who Bas Rudin is. Oh, Bas Rudin is a, a, a kid who was born in Holland, was bullied when he was young, had a horrible skin disease and a lung disease. Because of the bullying, I think I, I really like to become like Bruce Lee. He was my idol, slowly but surely, bada bing, bada boom, and I became the European champion Thai boxing in, in my class at that time, and then uh, three times King of Pankers and UFC heavyweight champion. Through your fighting history, who's been your toughest opponent? I, I would say Mazakatsu for now. I knocked him out, but it was a, a real tough fight. A lot of people say it's his best fight because he was such a tough guy. And every time he went down, he got up again. And then the final one was that I grabbed him by his hair. He had longer hair. And I drilled a knee in his face. And that was the one that took him out. Tell me a little bit about this TV show. It's called Punk Payback. We show it a, a security camera that picked up a robbery, let's say, in a, in a gas station. I'll talk about it, and then we built the same set, and they put me in the place of the guy, and then I show the people at home what you have to do to get out of there. And the liver, I get it. <laughs> Drink with a bottle of Chianti. Now, can you give me some uh, some tips and show me some of uh, your training to give me the Baz Rune way? Okay. Well, let's do it. Oh, liver shot. Whether it's a real bat or a wiffle ball bat, somebody's coming at you. So closing distance, that's what you want to do. Same if you are going to tall opponent to fight. You want to close the distance because you take the power away. If you are lucky enough that at the moment he loads up and you whoop, come in, that's a great thing. Even if he connects here, whoop, you know, this impact's not going to be really great because you're standing very close. Okay. From here, right away, boom, go for the headbutt. And after the headbutt, most of the time, go for a takedown. You want to have this guy on the bottom. Very simple. Whoop. Throw on the ground, keep holding here, and from here we go. Bang, da -da -dang, da -da -dang. Say your attacker has a blade, sharp edge, and you have to defend yourself against it. If you do have the chance, I would step back, pull your shirt off, wrap it around your hand, and then hopefully go here, protect the arteries. Maybe you get something you can at least you can stop it once. Right. If you don't have the time for it and the attack comes right away, it depends. See, now he stabbed and made coming uh, coming to the side, but it all needs to be simultaneously. It needs to be blocking, boom, and you need to go right away. This cool. could be one that you say, okay, you can lock up. Now you can simultaneously, and from here you can start unloading and knee him in the face. But it's also very easy to bring him down, you see? Maybe control, pull the bed here, and grab the knife out like that. Yeah! So you got some festive holidays coming up. Say somebody tries to steal your Halloween candy. Trick or treat! Hey, little boy, give me your candy. No! Okay, what can you do? Let him pull. His defense is gone. <laughs> Bonga! Headbutt in the face. Or, option number two, while he's pulling and you feel his weight moving backwards, suddenly you release and you're gonna trap him. Huh? Bong, uh, sit on top. <laughs> bong, bong, bong. Pull that crazy wig off here. How does that feel? Huh? <laughs> oh, your face. Okay. Let me eat some candy here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is have a little fun test. I'm gonna come after Boss Rudin with everything I got. Oh, look, look, look. That was definitely one of the most physical lethal Ds I've gone through. Maybe you wanna check out more stuff like this. Boss? Yes. 
Where are they going to see it? Punk Payback, November 2nd. Basshooting.com is my website. Basshooting MMA is on Twitter. Okay, now we get the leg. You're too close! Oh. He shattered $700,000 worth of camera equipment. But he's oh, Boss Rutten. Amazing. Many thanks to Weston Scott and, of course, El Guapo Boss Rutten. That was, yeah. he's so awesome. Uh, up next, Candace shoots gun in, uh, guns in Las Vegas. Um, again, she's gonna, take, she's gonna take an AK-47 and get loose. Helbig, you have been so kind and so sweet and so amazing to everybody here. And I was just wondering, you know, slap me if I'm wrong, but maybe you would want to be so kind and sweet and amazing and generous to our audience and give them some free stuff. Yay! Just kidding, I'd love to. I fear for my life. Yay! We gave you the chance to win an Alienware M18X gaming whoa, laptop. Whoa, top, top, whoa, top. Whoa, whoa. It's fancy, trust us. Uh, with that voice, how can I not? Exactly. <laughs> and the winner is Trisha A. from Westerly, Rhode Island. Hooray! Yeah! Congratulations, you lucky little girl. <laughs> And today, here's what we got for you. A one-of-the-kind Star Wars Old Republic mini bus featuring sultry Mandalorian bounty hunter Shay Vizla. And if you know who that is, I bet you definitely want this. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> to enter, visit g4tv.com slash epic giveaway. Get your entry in between now and Tuesday, October 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern to be eligible. And we'll announce the winner on tomorrow's show. It's time! for some fresh baked news. Mm. It smells good. I'm hungry and Sarah Underwood will be your server. Thanks guys, right now it's time to start the feed. All the news you need to know. It's Monday, October 24th, and here are your top stories. The Steve Jobs bio just hit virtual shelves, and it's filled with juicy bits about the visionary's life and work, including Steve's last passion project, Apple TV sets. Those TV sets might be arriving sooner than you think, too. In the book, author Walter Isaacson quotes Jobs talking about a tightly integrated iCloud-driven TV set with a stupid easy interface and the holy trinity of iTunes, iCloud, and Siri. Steve said he, quote, finally cracked it. Analysis dug deeper and found out that prototypes are already in the works and models as big as 50 inches could be in consumers' hands by the end of next year. Just make sure you start saving your pretty pennies now because initial projections say the Primo model could be as much as 2,000 big ones. Mm. BlizzCon went down late last week and there was plenty for Blizzard fans to be happy about. Beyond introducing a team-based mod for StarCraft II and a fourth expansion for World of Warcraft that introduces a neutral race of pandas, yes, I said pandas, Blizzard announced that buying a one-year subscription to WoW will get you Diablo 3 for free. In order to have enough time to play both World of Warcraft and Diablo 3, Blizzard also announced that they're creating a third day in the weekend. Just kidding, that'll be next year's BlizzCon. And finally, the release of the highly anticipated Skyrim game, game is inching closer. Here's a new live action trailer to wet your chops.
in bed. And now back to Kevin and Grace. Oh my God, thank you so much. So Grace is here today uh, because Candace went to Las Vegas mm -hmm. uh, to machine gun things that we all hate about Sin City. Rest in peace, Chris Angel. <laughs> oh, I, don't, no. I don't think she went that crazy. Oh, it's too bad. <laughs> When I come to Vegas, I could spend all my money on casino games and expensive drinks at posh hotels, but instead I'll spend it on precious metals. Lead bullets, because I'm shopping at the gun store. When in Rome, I mean Las Vegas, no trip is complete without taking out your frustrations with a few pulls of the trigger on some fully automatic weapons. But with a big wall of weapons, what will I choose? Okay, I'm gonna go with the M4, the AK-47, and the guys from the gun store promised me a little surprise. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there are a bunch of things about Vegas that I love, and a lot about Vegas that I simply can't stand. So today, I thought I'd bring by all my most hated things about Vegas and blow them all to hell. Okay, so the first gun I chose is the M4A1. The reason I chose this is because this gun can do about 800 rounds a minute. The rounds this thing shoots is 5.56 millimeters. I've got four magazines, and I think that's gonna be enough to fill my targets full of holes. Now, one of the things that really bothers me about this town are all the showgirls and the strippers running around with their fake tans and their weird stripper smells. It's enough to drive a girl crazy. I got him. Okay, this is the AK-47. It shoots 5.56 millimeter rounds, 800 rounds per minute. And the really cool thing about this gun is that it's virtually indestructible, which is why it's one of the most popular guns in the entire world. I think it's gonna be perfect. I love Vegas t-shirts. Come on, we know you're having a good time here, but does anybody really want to buy this crap? Die, tchotchkes! Now that's what I call souvenir hunting. And now for my final surprise, I've got the scorpion. It might be small, but it packs a big sting. This shoots a 32 auto round, and it's really fast, shooting up to 1,000 rounds a minute. It has a buttstock here so I can stabilize it into my shoulder. Because of its small size, this gun is highly concealable and is used in a lot of covert operations and close quarter combat. You can't walk two steps in this town without seeing this. Smell peddlers, I hate you! Feel the wrath of the scorpion, smell peddlers! Sorry, ladies. Ow. I got hit. Not really. I got some good aim. I got her right in the JJ. Yeah. Who needs a day at the spa when all you really need to relax is to blow some shit up? Now I can leave Vegas in peace. Thank you, the gun store. You've been oh so good to me. How much is this? Sorry guys, nothing personal. I just don't like strippers. My girlfriends. Thank you, Candace. Uh, we've been telling you all month about G4's newest show, Bomb Patrol Afghanistan. Yeah. Here. Tomorrow night, G4 brings you a first-person view of an elite U.S. military EOD unit on their dangerous five-month mission to find and destroy improvised explosive devices. Bomb Patrol Afghanistan premieres tomorrow at 10 p.m. Check out G4TV.com slash Bomb Patrol for videos, photos, and to get exclusive Get Glue stickers. Stay tuned. Jonah Hill will be here yay! next. I know. I'm looking forward yay, to yay, it. Yay, 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 yay. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote.
This chick's practicing her speed stacking. So what happens next? Does she complete the stack but fall over while celebrating? Does she slam a cup into her own hand? Or does a cup fly up and smack her in the face? Find out when we return. Fail. You're dead. Major fail. Fail. Fail, 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 fail. You lose. This chick's practicing her speed stacking. So what happens next? Does she complete the stack but fall over while celebrating? Does she slam a cup into her own hand? Or does a cup fly up and smack her in the face? Yeah, see, I would totally start watching speed stacking if that's how it always ended. Jonah Hill looks a lot shorter as an animated character. Please welcome The Reason We Breathe. Our son, Alan Gregory de Longpre. Thank you for coming, everyone. Please lower your voices. I'm speaking. Oh, Chloe's here. And Julie hasn't found her way back into the crowd yet. Anyway, back to me. When they first called and told me I'd been nominated for a Tony Award, I said one word. Pass. Because it's not about the awards, people. It's about the work. But no matter what happens, I'm gonna remain the same normal kid with my gay father, his flavor of the month boy toy, a multi-million dollar loft, and enough cash to buy and sell all of you disgusting people. Please welcome Mr. Jonah Hill, everybody. All right, I got so many questions for you, good sir. Uh, I admire the fact that you were able to make something in this day and age, in this socioeconomic climate, if you will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, the pitch process for you, how does this work? I, you go into somebody's tower over at Fox. I imagine you're wearing a mesh v-neck and some yeah. uh, hot shorts, maybe some Ugg boots. My standard uniform. You kick the boots oh, yeah. on the desk and you say, I'm Jonah Hill, where's my check? I got the check, yeah. Is that how it goes for you? No, no, not, not at all. What's no. been the journey then for Alan Gregory? Alan Gregory, well... They, I, I grew up like a total product of The Simpsons, you know, that's how I learned about comedy and that's how I learned about what I, was why I wanted to be in show business, it was to be a part of The Simpsons. So I'd done a voice on The Simpsons, a guest starring, and then Fox said, would you want to be the voice of this new animated show we're putting together? And I said, well, if I'm on this show, you're never going to let me create my own show because you already have me on your network. And they go, well, you haven't created your own show. And I said, well... You know, give me a minute. Clever so, girl. So, yeah. <laughs> so I went downstairs. I lived in my building. I lived in an apartment building, and downstairs was a writer named Jared Paul, who's a friend of mine, who was him and his partner Andy Mogul. They were great writers, and I said the three of us should write and create an animated show together. And so a month later, we came out of the room with Alan Gregory. We spent a month writing it for free on spec, which means like you don't get paid any money. Right. And then we took it out to the networks, and then cut to two and a half years later, and. We're, uh, we're going on after The Simpsons. So 8.30, two, Sunday congratulations, night. Congratulations, by the yeah. way. And this is, and awesome. I think that's important. Two and a half years. Yeah. This wasn't like they said, come up with a show. You're like, okay, cool, we'll start a Google Doc, and then yeah. a week later, you have a show. No, it's... You think that's how it's going to be. Right. Uh, so that when we started, we were like, oh, we'll be on in a couple of weeks. We'll figure it out. And yeah, it takes quite a while. And, and how but it's worth on every I mean, second, you know. Um, I'm very hands on. You know, Jared and Andy, myself, we created the show. And David Goodman, who uh, is the showrunner, who was a producer of Family Guy for many years. And the four of us run the show. And, you know, we write the episodes. We have a writing staff who writes a lot of the stuff with us. Mm -hmm. And um, we make all the decisions from, you know, we design our Bento Box, our animation company. We gave them direction on how to design each character, what we wanted the look of the show to be like. Every decision has to run through the four of us. So you weren't just rolling around through the office on a Segway shouting at people no. random words. Well, I was. <laughs> but that was like after hours. That was after, <laughs> so yeah, that's part of yeah. defining the character yeah, after exactly, hours. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But, uh, uh, no, so did you, you have, what sort of research did you do to, to figure out how Alan Gregory should look and act and feel? Well, we wanted to feel like a page out of The New Yorker. That was kind of the, the like, you know, we wanted to feel like it was from the 60s and, and uh, really hand-drawn and beautiful and not like kind of jagged and uh, rough. We wanted to feel like 
pretty, like aesthetically nice looking. So we kind of gave the animators, you know, the New Yorker, and then we gave them a lot of Wes Anderson movies and uh, Capote. Well, Capote's a big influence on Alan Gregory as a character, right. just as far as being like kind of an arrogant uh, narcissist and, and you were involved down to like even the look and feel like the, the, what he should wear and how he should oh yeah i gave them i like literally would take pictures of suits and send them the suits like i would go to like a fancy clothing shop or go online and um uh did you hang out in like the granimal section of sears to look at seven year olds no, though, we, like, we gave them, leering? like no, the what whole are they point, wearing well the whole point was he dresses like a rich adult right man so like you would go to like a nice clothing store and see suits and send them to him for references and then we would take images of like we wanted him to be the cutest kid ever that was that's what idea. i meant so were you hanging around like portrait studios no, like but at sears i kept getting just look at your child let yeah. me just take some reference photos well i kept getting worried that if a cop ever went on my computer it was just all the google images were like adorable seven-year-old boy <laughs> like, you know it was like Pete Townsend style, you know, and you right. can't claim research. Yeah, I was going to say, level with me right now. Yeah. You were worried the feds were going to come at you anyways for your Google searches, so you had yeah. to create a show around Googling yeah. adorable seven-year-old boys. Was all, it's all a um, rodeo clown for what's actually going <laughs> on. Yeah. So the next show that you're going to do is going to be a stop-motion claymation about Russian hookers, thermite, and, exactly. and how to run a dog fight. Yes, of course. Just, you, have to, you have to clear up all your Google searches. Yeah, it's the Michael Vick story. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I love that, I mean, it's two and a half years. You've been involved, not just from concept, but micromanaging, like really, right. really in the dirt. Um, and now this is like the, the final leg, right? You yeah. see the finish line, and that unfortunately involves a lot of promotion yeah. uh, and fielding calls from like the foreign press, right. which you had to do this morning. How are you polite to people, even when they ask, myself included, the most asinine questions? <laughs> it's, there's no part of you that wants to be impolite. It's only impolite if they're impolite. Like, a, like, obviously, they don't, you have to assume anyone, no one in the world besides you knows what the show is, what right. it's about a, at all. So having to answer what the show's about and everything like that, it, you do it over and over again, but it's important because you want people to know what the show's about. So uh, I don't, you know, it's, it's as much part of the job as making it is. You have to sell what you've made, you know, and when it's something that I put so much time and effort into and so many people in our organization have put so much time and effort into making Alan Gregory great, I'd be letting them down and myself down by not getting out there and talking about it as much as possible. Right. All yeah. right, so uh, very quickly, episode one, when it, when it actually airs, when it hits the tube, where are yeah. you watching? From a Buffalo Wild Wings? From your, <laughs> from your living room? Where are you seeing it? Um, I'm going to be watching in the place I've rented in Atlanta where I'm shooting a movie. And uh, the rest, it's Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn and myself are in this movie called Neighborhood Watch that we're shooting. And they're going to come by. Everyone from the movie is going to come by and watch it. That's together. great company. Yeah. Yeah. Have some ranch and some carrots. We'll really some, do it up nice. We'll do it up nice. Yeah. I will be watching from my living room, good sir. I okay, cannot wait awesome. to see it. Jonah, always Thank a pleasure. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a slight undertaking. So Thank kudos. You. Uh, Jonah you. Hill, you know him. You love him. Alan Gregory premieres on Fox this Sunday night. Make sure you watch it. It's time to attack this Halloween horror stuff. It's just about Halloween, so what's a girl to eat? <laughs> Why, brains, of course. Oh. Well, a gummy brain, that is. Quench your thirst for gray matter with this life-size seven-pound gummy cranium. And yes, oh yes, I said seven pounds. If brain matter isn't your flavor of choice, do not worry. It's a tasty, calorie-packed blend of pink, fruity bubble gum. Oh, and it's gluten-free. Yeah! yeah. You know, overall, you one dead with sensitive stomachs. So get your fix of brains for about 30 bucks. That's a steal. Sometimes nothing is more satisfying than scaring the crap out of some trick-or-treaters. So show a little kid what it's like to piss his pants with a snake wreath. This door-mounted collection of slithering, hissing reptiles is perfect for scaring off conniving candy grubbers. It's triggered by an onboard motion sensor so the little runs won't see it coming. Best of all, it's from the Martha Stewart collection. And trust me, nothing is scarier than that. God bless her. So frighten your neighbor's kids with the ease for just 28 bucks. That's less than the gummy brain. And finally, you may or may not be thinking about hosting your own haunted house this year. What better way to welcome your guests than with a talking skeleton in a rocking chair? What? 
talking rocking skeleton not only talks, it also rocks back and forth because rocking chairs are creepy. This dead doorman will cost you $1,250. Yeah, but, but that's okay because it comes pre-programmed with a bunch of unpleasant sayings. Plus, you can add your own audio tracks or hook it up to a microphone for real-time scares. For example, it could say, mug the owner of this house. He has too much disposable income. Uh, or you can decorate the front of a Cracker Barrel. Head on over to g4tv.com slash AOTS for info on all of this horrific stuff and more. It's the spookiest time of year, and today's Threads has fun shirts you can wear right above your Halloweener. So stick around. Are you tired of playing around with pissed off birds and need a game with a little more action? Then you need to check out Siegecraft. Siegecraft is a touch-based action game where you must lead your army to victory using your trusty crossbow and a catapult. The game offers hours of action-packed gameplay as you fight countless knights, samurais, and vikings through five different campaigns and 20 gorgeous levels. Completing levels will help you earn coins which you can use to purchase new weapons and ammunition upgrades. Thor's hammer, decayed troll's heads, and even whole cows are just a few of the ammo add-ons that will help you conquer your enemies. <laughs> right on target. In addition to the single-player campaign, Siegecraft offers two different multiplayer modes. You can conquest with your friends online or go split-screen on the same iPad. So head on over to the iTunes App Store and check out Siegecraft for the iPhone and iPad for only 99 cents. How do you like directing naked people? It's fantastic. It's great. I love it. I love it. Epictober continues tomorrow on AOTS. Bomb Patrol Afghanistan's Chase Holzhauer will be here live with his Xbox-controlled bomb disposal robot. Then Adam Sessler drops by with his impressions of one of the biggest games of the year, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Then, Chris Gore reviews new releases including Captain America The First Avenger and cult hit Attack the Block on DV Doosday. Epictober continues tomorrow. Listen, there's only one time of year when wearing a shirt covered in shiny skulls is actually acceptable. Mm -hmm. Here's a new Halloween edition of Threads. Spooky! Halloween! You know, bobbing for apples, it can make you look stupid. And so can wearing those lame-ass costumes to work. But no one likes a stick in the mud. So make your October wardrobe a little more epic by picking up these creepy threads. Rumplo is a t-shirt website where everyone from designers to stores can come to shuck their wares. It's also a place where you can find the perfect shirt to wear to a Halloween party. Simply search for what type of t-shirt you're looking for and choose from the weird to the weirder or the weirdest. Wait, was that a smurf? Anyway, you can't go wrong with this paper bag monster or this horror chase t-shirt. Prices will vary as you're redirected to the designer's website once you click buy now. Browse Rumplo.com and grab a conversation starter. You know, for when you run into that slutty secretary at the punch bowl. I mean, her costume is a, a slutty secretary. Not that your secretary at work is a... Never mind. Onward! Redbubble is a marketplace where artists can come to upload their work for free, which makes it a hotbed of wearable sinister art. Look under the t-shirts and hoodies section, and you'll find plenty of supernatural designs like these zombies, or this horrifying Ronald McDonald t-shirt. I'm not loving it. And I don't even know what this one is. Use some of the pre-made tags to help find just what you're looking for, because you can't show up to a hayride wearing just anything. Trust me. If you have some art of your own that you think might be a hot seller, go to redbubble.com and upload a digital file. But if you're like us and struggle to draw simple shapes, just stick to shopping. Shirts range from 20 to 30 bucks. And finally, make sure to swing by 7thInc.com. All of the items there are designed by the owner, Matthew Johnson, and they are purposefully limited in availability, making these products true pieces of art. 
Seventh Inc.'s haunted collections ooze Halloween themes and borrow iconography from the masters of dark literature. If Shakespeare's Wolf and The Raven of Nevermore are too serious for you, maybe the Lucky Brains or Night of the Living Bread t-shirts are more your style. Be sure to follow Seventh Inc. as Matthew releases limited edition box sets from time to time. Only seven boxes are made per collection, and each one is laser engraved with numbered wooden coins accompanying each shirt. Seventh Inc. uses tagless American Apparel t-shirts with a logo on the sleeve and are only $24. Hoodies are available as well for $45. Go to the checkout and enter the coupon code G4TV to get 20% off through November 9th. So what have we learned today? Well, t-shirts can be art. And art can be creepy. And by that transitive property, you get the point. We also learned that saying slutty secretary must be qualified before being tossed around. Is so hot, yeah. right? Yeah, let's that's let's check in with the Twitter wall. You want to do that? I'd love to. We have a wall of tweets, Yay. and let's read one. Uh, JC of NYC. Ooh. It's good to narrow that down. Says Grace Helbig. How does it feel to host a tag of the show for the first time? That's one question. Okay. Apparently, he has a follow up. Wow. Has Kevin? That's me. Been inappropriate off camera. He wants to know. Wow. Well, thank you so much for your questions. They just are so sweet. You're so inquisitive. Um, it's been so fun. Kevin's been weird off camera, but lucky for him, I'm great at repressing my feelings. Yay! Yeah. Just put him in a little box in on an emotional shelf. Box. Next to daddy you issues. Right there. Just tuck him away. Fireproof box. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going to come out someday. It's okay. I'll it's wait. all going to come out. It's okay. Someday. So. Hey, for that insightful tweet, you've just won a t shirt pack oh from gosh. Seventh Inc. Oh my God. Look at here. Look at there. Zombie owls dancing with a Simon Hoot Hoot. Look at all the, this thing. Whoa! Look at this is doing something. <laughs> Crazy. You get to put this on your stomach. Many thanks to our guest, Jonah Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Boss Ruth. Yeah. You always adore Candace Bailey, and of course, the best co-host in the world, Miss Grace Hill.